Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we return to Distro Wars with Manjaro Plasma versus KDE Neon. Both of these, of course, are using the Plasma desktop. And in this case, we're going to be looking at how does Neon, which is really the staging ground for Plasma, compare to Manjaro, which is definitely more of a user-ready distribution. Now, I always love pointing this out because it's like pricking a beehive that even according to the KDE people, this is not the Plasma distro, nor is it even technically a distro according to their FAQ. So if you head on over, is it a distro? Well, not quite. It's a package archive. Of course, you could say that with pretty much any list, just right? Well, I wouldn't quite say it's a distro. It's just an archive of a bunch of packages. But, you know, uh, that's what they say. I just like pointing that out. If you do want to grab KDE Neon, you can grab the user edition, which is considered stable, that yes, you can use it just like a distribution. It is an extraordinarily minimal Ubuntu-based, so it has apt as the package manager, an Ubuntu-based version, and uh, it's going to have all of the rolling plasma to it, however. You also can grab the testing edition, day-to-day uh, -day bug fixes, you have the unstable edition, and you have a developer edition with a lot of the development libraries pre-installed. Now, as far as Manjaro is concerned, we have a variety of different things we can grab over at Manjaro. Uh, on their new website, you can come on over and give it a try. Hit the download button over here, and this guy will take you over to the three main core distributions, which are going to be XFCE, KDE Plasma, the one we're looking at today, and um, the GNOME version. If you head on up to the additions up here and go with the, uh, you can see these are the official. We also have a, um, we also have the architect version as well, where you can build your own Manjaro. Uh, over here under the community, we have a variety of different desktop environments under the community. We have some ARM development stuff. So Raspberry Pi builds, Pinebook builds, and there's some development information as well. So of course I'm using the official KDE Plasma, the brand new version that just came out and I had a look at this distro and it was absolutely amazing. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to look at how these guys compare. Uh, we're gonna look at their RAM, the kernel, the theming options, install, installing applications, and the Plasma versions in this case. So let's go ahead and get booted on into Manjaro first. And uh, this guy here, like I said, I just did a full review of this one um, uh, recently, and it is absolutely an excellent distribution. All right, so we have landed on the desktop here, and uh, we got our basic notifications over here. Now, both of these are going to give you any updates that are available. So this one here, it's telling us that our system is up to date. Both of these should be up to date. I just updated them before the video recording here. So they do have the features for installing the updates. Before we do anything else, I'd like to see if uh, we have the ability to check our RAM usage. So let's go ahead and have a look at uh, how much memory the system is taking up here. Here's our basic system load. And it looks like we are on 0 0.45 gig. So not too bad under, uh, this is under half a gig of RAM. So very nice out of the box. Also, let's see if we can find, I can never remember, is it about, yeah, system information. So our Plasma version is going to be 5.18.4, and we are looking at the QT of 5.14, and the oh, kernel version is going to be 5.6. 7-1. Now, of course, Manjaro, though, does have an advantage that Ubuntu-based distros do not have in that you can actually easily change your kernel from the kernel manager. So you can see that we are actually running the 5.6.7, but you can actually go all the way up, or if the newer kernel is posing a problem for you, you can drop down to other versions instead. So you're not locked into your kernel and you don't have to install anything else. Like there are ways to put a different kernel on Ubuntu-based systems, but they're not built into the system out of the box. And so that is certainly an important point to look at. Uh, let's move on to the theming. 
So as far as our theming is concerned here, Manjaro overall out of the box pretty much wins theming across all distributions, all builds. Manjaro just looks amazing. And so they did not disappoint on this version either. We do have a few other therm, um, theming options available to you. Uh, we do have Breathe 2 is what their custom theming is here. We do have Breeze, Breeze Dark, and Oxygen as far as global themings. And as far as our styles, we do have a wide variety. I think there's only five in Neon. So here again, Breathe 2, this is the dark version. If you do want to use a lighter uh, system instead, you can go ahead and go with the Breathe Breathe to light, which is basically the same theme, just a light version instead of a dark version. So you do have options to change your theming around. Overall, the theming on Plasma, no matter which type of application you're running, generally looks really good. Plasma is just that desktop environment that even if uh, you install it out of like Debian or Raw Arch, it's like the only desktop environment that does not come out of the Raw repos looking like was hit by an ugly stick. But Manjaro takes that a little bit further. So as far as the theming, there's lots of options, very streamlined, and they paid specific attention to it. Now let's move on to software. Of course, uh, Manjaro being based on Arch is going to use Pac-Man as a package manager, but they do have the GUI Pamuk installed on all Manjaros, which is infinitely better than the, um, the discovery that's going to come on Neon. Now there's extra bonuses inside of this particular version of Pamuk, and that is that out of the box, we have a GUI installer for snaps, flat packs, and the Arch user repository. So you can just toggle these guys on or off with a button over here. There's your official repos, and you can go ahead and have a look at any application. So for example, if I search up Kaden Live, okay, and I do a search for Kaden Live, you can see here I have a flat pack version and I can search for it. So there's the flat pack version, there is a snap version, there's an Arch user repository version, and there is a repository version. I'm going to go ahead and install this here. Um, I just want to, um, I want to go ahead and um, install Kaden Live just to um, see the actual installed version so I can compare this with uh, what I have on uh, Neon, which I just installed out of the, the basic repo. All right, so that has installed itself. So let's have a look at Caden Live Video Editor. The icon is brand new, telling me that is probably absolutely one of the latest versions. Wow, that's looking nice. I've not seen this version of Caden Live yet. So let's have a look at our About Caden Live. And let's see, you can see that we are indeed running 20.04.0 on Caden Live. So Pomoc itself does have those extra advantages that um, while Neon does have Snap support installed, I don't know if it has Flatpak support installed, but you can't install Snaps from the GUI that I am aware of. You can easily install them from the terminal, which is easy enough, but this will allow you to make the decision and clearly see what is the uh, repo version, what is the snap version, what is the flatpak version, what is the Arch user repository version. So this just makes GUI installation a lot easier. On top of that, I think that Pomoc does work way better than Discover does on Neon. So there is our basic rundown of Manjaro. So let's go ahead and come right on back in with, um, with Neon next. Okay, so here we are on Neon, and um, with this guy, you can see that we are shipping with a light theme right out of the box. Let's go ahead and have a look at our uh, system resources before we do anything else, get ourselves a uh, very equivalent test here. So we can see that here we are on running 0 0.37 gigs. That is one of the lowest system resources I've seen in a long time. Mostly owing to the fact that this really has nothing else pre-installed, whereas Manjaro does have some thing, other things pre-installed. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at our system information. So here we are running 5.18.4. So again, we have the latest version of, uh, of KDE Plasma installed. So I didn't take note of the QT version, but I think that looks about right. And... 
let's see, where's the kernel at? 5.3. So we are running a slightly older version of kernel. Certainly not old, just not quite as new as the latest version. And like I said, there's not an easy way to change the kernels in the system itself. You would have to install extra software in order to change the kernels. All right, so the next area we want to look at is our theming capabilities. Not nearly as many options as we had. Uh, like I said, though, Plasma out of the box is one of the best designed desktop environments. Uh, it's the one that you can pull out of the basic repositories and it's going to look good either way versus my favorite Cinnamon. It looks great on Manjaro. It looks awesome on Linux Mint and Debian. It was beat with an ugly stick several times. Uh, easy to resolve for sure, but nevertheless. So here is um, the dark version. So this is the only dark version theme that we have. It is a little bit harder than the Manjaro one with the light greens in it, but still, it's good. We don't have as many options as well. You can see here's five options. We have the air, breeze, light, breeze, breeze, dark, and the uh, skeuomorphic oxygen as available options there. Not as many theming options, but again, you can always install extra themes. That's not a big deal, and it does still look really good out of the box. Now, where these two are really going to be a lot different is going to be in your software management. I found that Discovery is a little bit more buggy than Pomoc is, and not quite as, I just kind of want to say, not. it's not quite as polished, it's not quite as easy to use. Let's have a look at our settings. Okay, so we can actually enable Snap and Flatpak. Um, that's actually new to me. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see, can I actually enable those? Um, so I guess maybe they're there already. I can't toggle them on or off. So, um, it, it looks like as though they may actually be ready. So let's go ahead and do some searching around. Uh, let's see if, uh, we have Caden live and okay. There's snap flat pack. Let's go applications. Let's search for Caden live, which I already have Caden live installed. I want to see what else we have though. So let's go ahead and with Caden Live, video editor, and I want to see what versions we happen to have. It's based on the icon, it definitely looks like um, not quite as new as 2004. So it looks like we are running 1912. Still a fairly new version, not quite as new, not quite as bleeding edge. So here is, what's this one from? Okay, so this is the snap. So we do have the snap installed. I did not see the flat pack for uh, 4K and live, unless this is a snap uh, flat pack, which that's not. That's coming from the repositories down here at the bottom. It tells me it's from the repositories. I'm not seeing the one from the um, uh, from the flat pack. I wonder if I can search just for flat pack applications. Let's go ahead and have a look at uh, look at what I can do here. Back application add-ons, plasma add-ons. Okay, so this is a snap. This VLC is a snap. It doesn't tell us quite as easily up here uh, as it does in the uh, as it does in in uh, Manjaro. So if you are concerned about which version you're getting. Manjaro gets us uh, more information. So the one that is installed is from the uh, the one that is installed is from the repo. So out of the box, though, it does appear it is supporting snaps and flat packs. That's actually new to me. That's something I did not uh, did not know it did. So hey, there you go. Um, not as easy to see and to sort as it is in Manjaro, which I think definitely does that a little bit better. But there is your brief comparison of the two distributions. So what's the basic summary? Well, Neon uses slightly less RAM, not super significant. They both have an equivalent KDE version. Neon is a little bit older of a Linux kernel uh, versus Manjaro is the cutting edge, but Manjaro allows you to change that kernel version if there's a problem with that or if you even want to go newer than that. Theming, if theming is a big deal, I think Manjaro is certainly a better a better choice, but hey, they're both actually pretty good. 
As far as the application base, this is where you're going to, to have to draw the line in the sand. So if you are concerned about which versions you're using, if you want to prioritize repository, I think that Manjaro is going to be a little bit better because you can actually completely disable the Snap and the Flatpak from searching in the GUI uh, installer. You can turn it on or off at will with a simple toggle button, whereas this, I could not even turn off those in Discover. However, the known flat packs that I know of for known software was still not showing up in the system. Also, the repo versions being based on Ubuntu are much older than those being in Manjaro. So if the latest package versions is more important to you, then the Manjaro is going to be the better build. If you want the stability without your features changing, KDE Neon is going to be a better build. Which one of is absolutely better? There is no absolute winner here. You're going to need to decide for yourself based on those criteria that we had first mentioned. Let me know if you like this video in the comments down below. Give us some likes or some dislikes if you want. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and you can help support us at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.